to longevity. And I would like to introduce Dr. Robert Goldman, Chairman of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, who will be our next speaker. Dr. Goldman, if you'd come up, please. And Dr. Goldman really deserves a lot of credit for the growth of the Academy interna internationally. Dr. Goldman is very, very significantly involved with the International Olympic Committee and with many of the uh, international uh, political groups in medicine and has been bringing the message of, uh, of anti-aging medicine, the, uh, the uh, AFRM, and uh, has helped to inaugurate the World Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine for the rest of the planet. And it is his um, relentless efforts on our behalfs and on behalf of the future of medicine that will guarantee that the future of medicine will be a brighter, happier place and that the future of medicine will be all about the early detection, prevention, treatment, and or reversal of aging-related disease. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Robert Goldman. Good morning. I'm glad to see I saw a lot of you up here very early. Everybody was running around the block this morning. It was very nice to see. You know, anti-aging medicine is really the next generation of sports medicine. When we started the academy back in 1992, we flew 12 doctors to Chicago, all in different specialties, plastic surgery, dermatology, internal medicine, endocrinology. We all sat around the table and we said, you know, we have to change the paradigm of medicine. We have to change the way we approach these things because in sports medicine, and this being an Olympic year, if we want to have a world champion athlete, we take the best physiologists, the best biomechanists, the best nutritionists. We put it all together to come up with a program that will give someone their peak performance. But we weren't doing this with patients. What we're doing is waiting for them to get sick and break and then fix, break and then fix, which is a really odd way to do it. It's sort of the antithesis of what we should really be focusing on in medicine. And those 12 doctors evolved into 20,000 members around the world, as Dr. Klatz mentioned. We're, uh, through our outreach programs, training over half a million health professionals a year. And I spend a lot of my time internationally uh, visiting now in excess of 40 to 50 nations a year. I just got back from China. I've been spending a lot of time in China this year because we have the Beijing Olympics. They're really doing some remarkable uh, structures for the athletes um, in terms of training facilities, competitive facilities. And uh, we'll, probably, <clears throat> we'll probably be the most watched Olympic Games in history. It's certainly the most expensive. They're spending over 40 billion U.S. dollars for these games, which is astronomical. Um, and the only problem, well, a few problems that I see there, one will be the air quality in Beijing, so that's going to be challenging, and all the algae growing. But aside from that, um, it will be a remarkable example of human peak performance, which is really what it's all about. And in the Far East, you know, they're much more open to new technologies. They're open because of Chinese medicine and Chinese uh, conventional areas of medicine that integrate in herbs and things that we're also more open to is more holistic doctors of anti-aging and regenerative medicine. But with this international expansion, which has also happened, uh, I meet regularly through, I also run the International Medical Commission, and for 23 years I've been overseeing 180 countries. And that gives us direct entree to ministers of sport, ministers of health, ministers of tourism. So we were able to get a lot of unique support, which is how we've been able to go from just two international conferences to over 30 international venues all around the world, many with government support, which is a very unique situation for a medical federation, because generally you'll hold one meeting every two to four years in a different country. We're in all these countries every year. So it's been a very exciting growth, and it's only been over the last 36 months. So no medical society in the history of medicine has accomplished what we have through this manner and mechanism, which is also opening up doors to the medical universities. Uh, Yudhiana University in Indonesia, 
which is one of the government institutions, has begun a master's degree in anti-aging regenerative medicine. They have a full department. They have hundreds of medical students that are now, and, and postdoctoral physicians that are now involved in this uh, several year program for a master's degree in anti-aging medicine. I met with the government officials and the Minister of Tourism and Sport in Malaysia just recently, and several of the major medical schools there, which are under the British school system. And we're going to be developing departments and master's degree programs for graduate physicians there as well, and we're doing this in Europe and all, all over the world. So these are very exciting developments for us and plays very well into the postdoctoral programs that we do through the AFRM. We have over 300 physicians in separate rooms right now undergoing fellowship training. The fellowship training is a very extensive form of training where they go through a series of modules, and I urge you all to be involved in the fellowship training program because it really allows you to go deep in your knowledge base, your practice, and we're looking for other types of consensual approvals for those physicians that complete their fellowship training. We also have the board certification through the American Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, and that will eventually end up being the board certification that one would grandfather into for full board certification as we move this along. And these are being done all around the world, and so we are moving these aspects that are so critically important to the growth of a new field of medicine. We also have the World Council on Clinical Accreditation, which is a credentialing body for clinics, medical spas, and physician practices, whereby we see that physicians are involved in these advanced levels of training, the right equipment is in place, and all this information can be picked up at the A4M area. And you need to constantly improve yourself. You have to sort of look at yourself as an elite athlete. And uh, how many people are new here anyway? Could you raise your hand? Okay, there's a fair amount of you that are new. This is your first conference. At the end of this weekend, the most common comment that we get from doctors, which makes this all worthwhile, I just got back from China just uh, 60 hours ago. I was in a meeting with the governors and provincial leaders in four cities in China uh, in four days um, uh, with some of the pre-Olympic uh, meetings as well as the development of our AFRAM China group, which is partnered with the largest medical diagnostic company that puts all the CT, MRI, and PET scans all throughout China. They have 100 installations. That is our partner in China. So we have some very, and I met with the Academy of Medicine, a number of the universities when I was out there, as well as the heads of the government. So we're doing things in a very unique way, and I think what you're going to find, and the thing that makes it worthwhile for us is when a doc comes up to us after the conference, or during the course of the conference, and said, you know, I've not been this excited about practicing medicine since I graduated medical school. That makes all the hours on the planes and all the, the hard work worthwhile because we make you feel good about being a doctor again. You know, the lawyers are out there always trying to make us feel miserable. We started a new program at University of Chicago where we're now substituting the lawyers for the albino rats in our animal experimentation. And uh, this is really working out quite well. We do this because, you know, scientific protocols and parameters are remaining the same. The brain size is identical between the lawyers and the rats. Uh, they reproduce at a similar rate. They're not concerned about what sex they're reproducing with. Um, and, uh, you know, we could sacrifice them after. And most importantly, we can get a lawyer to do things we can never get a rat to do. So it's really worked out quite well. Uh, all right, I'll stop with the lawyer jokes. Don't worry, in China now, they're doing the same thing. They think we need 100, the, the reporter in China, when I was there, said they're looking, they're saying they need another 100,000 lawyers to handle the workload, but they don't think they have a sewer system that can hold it. So it's a problem. Um, with the growth of the uh, World Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, which we founded back in the uh, late 90s, which is our sister, sister organization, which is a fully approved UK charity uh, based out of, uh, out of London, uh, we, are, uh, we have been uh, voting in and appointing new, uh, new people to grow our organization and grow the prestige and the, and the depth and breadth of uh, that organization. Is Dr. Maroon, are we in the room here? Dr. Joe Maroon here. Can Joe come up, please?